1.5 proofs that are not valid. What we're trying to do is we're trying, in this um, case, is we're looking at proofs. We're saying, hey, there's a mistake. So here's a statement someone made. There are three errors in this sentence. Is this statement valid? And here is a sample answer. There are only two spelling errors in the statement, not three, so the statement is invalid. If the statement is invalid, however, the statement itself is an error, making a total of three errors in the statement. Because the statement contains three errors, then it's valid. But a statement cannot be both valid and invalid. So that was confusing, eh? So there's this statement is both valid and invalid at the same time. Let's move on to proofs. Okay. Um, so Bev claims he can prove that 3 equals 4. And this is what he did. He said, there we go. He said that let's suppose that A plus B equals C. This statement can be written as 4A minus 3A. So this entire statement is the same thing as A. Um, 4B minus 3B, that's the same thing as just B, equals 4C minus 3A. And again, that is C. Uh, and then when he wrote this out, he said, well, this can be regrouped as, as 4A plus 4B minus 4C. So he brought all the 4s over to one side. I'm going to clean this up a bit. He said, let's bring all the 4s to one side. We have 4A, 4B minus 4C is equal to 3A plus 3B minus 3C. He did some factoring so, and using the distributed property, he factored out a 4. 4 times A plus B minus C equals 3 times A plus B minus C. He divided both sides by A plus B minus C and he got 4 equals 3. So what we need to do is show that this is invalid. And a proof is invalid if it contains an error in reasoning or contains invalid assumptions. So did we assume something that was not true or did we do some sort of error in reasoning? Here's what Prue has to say about Bev. So he went step by step. He said step one, A plus B equals C. His premise was at the beginning of the proof, variables can be used to represent numbers, so that's okay. Then um, this substitution, again, he said, well, that seems to be okay. Those are all valid. 4A minus 3 is, in fact, A. 4B minus 3B is, in fact, B. And 4C minus 3C is, C, is minus 3C is C. Um, and then this reorganization. Um, simplifying is fine. Doing sound mathematical operations is fine. We can do that. His factoring, um, that's fine as well. Now let's look at this next step where he divided. And this is where Prue notices a mistake. He says, wait a second. A plus B equals C was our premise. If we subtract C from both sides, we get A plus B minus C is equal to zero. So in other words, in this step, he divided both sides of his equation by zero. Dividing both sides of the equation is not valid. Dividing by zero is undefined. Okay, so remember every math teacher you've ever had who when talking about division says, do not divide by zero. That is what Bev did here. Okay, so that was an example, just to go back here, that was an example. Let's look at this. So did there was, was there an error in reasoning or was there invalid assumptions? In this case, that was an error in reasoning. They did uh, Bev did not use sound mathematical facts or operations. He divided by zero, not allowed. Next up, um, Liz claims that she has pro proved that negative 5 is equal to 5. So she assumed that negative 5 was equal to 5. She squared both sides. She got 25 equals 25. Well, that's true. Um, therefore, my assumption has to be true. What's the error? I'm going to remind you again. 
a proof that contains an error in reasoning or invalid assumptions. Liz started off with a false assumption that two numbers are equal. So right away, by saying something that's false, it's just like if someone starts lying to you. You're not going to believe anything they say after that. Um, she started off with a false assumption. Um, everything after that was sound, but it doesn't matter because the reasoning is built on the false assumption. So Liz's conclusion is built on a false conception, assumption, and the conclusion she reached is the same as her assumption. If the assumption is not true, then any argument that was built on that is not valid. And this is called circular reasoning. It's an argument that is incorrect because it makes use of the conclusion to be proved. It starts with where you, you want to be. So it starts with something that's false, and it says, well, because of that, this and this and this are true. Well, you still haven't shown that the beginning part is true. Uh, another example. Josiah was trying to prove the following number trick. Choose any number. Add 3, double it. Add 4, divide by 2, take away the number you started with. Each time he tries the trick, oh, it's a she. She ends up with 5. Her proof, however, does not give the same result. So here's her proof. So she chose any number. And remember those generalizations that we learned in 1.4? Any number. She added 3. She doubled it. She added 4, she divided by 2, and finally she took away the number she started with. So she subtracted n, and she always gets 5. Oh, sorry. She already did subtract n, 2n minus n. She got the number plus 5. So what's her error? Where did she make a mistake? Well, if you look very carefully at this step right here, she took 2n plus 10 and she divided it by 2. 2n plus 10 divided by 2. And she said that's equal to 2n plus 5. What she should have said, this 2, you have to divide both terms by 2. This should have indeed just been 1n plus 5. So here, if this step would have been n plus 5, and then when she did subtract that n, she would have just been left with 5. So that was her error there. So this section, just to review, where a single error in reasoning will break down the logical argument of a deductive proof. This rule results in an invalid conclusion or a conclusion that is not supported by the proof. Division by zero, things you're looking for, always creates an error leading to an invalid conclusion. Circular reasoning um, must be avoided. So starting with your conclusion to prove something. Um, be careful not to assume a result that follows from what you are trying to prove. The reason you are writing a proof is so others can read and understand it. After you write a proof, have someone who has not seen your proof read it. This is where parents and other peers in other math classes might be helpful. If the person gets confused, your proof may need to be clarified. So in section 1.5, I'd like you to do questions 1, 2, 3, 5, and 7.